welcome back. I've got the large motor here. The, this is the motor that was um, off an electric bicycle. Uh, probably very unsuitable as a position control system, but nevertheless I used it before. <coughs> and I've got the uh, really big H bridge, um, well, say, handles about 100 amps or something. Uh, it's a bit of a it's over engineering there, but uh, the reason I've, I've got it there is uh, if there's any oscillations, I don't have to worry about blowing the H bridge, so it's it's deliberately too big for what I need, and that's a good thing for experimenting anyway. Um, I've got my ESP32 here, uh, power supply, set point, uh, which is a uh, quadrature detector, quadrature detector here on the uh, output of the motor so I can control its position. And I've got one of these really nice new um, little tiny oscilloscopes just to show you. I've got the proper scope but I thought I'd show you this um, if you can see it. Um, you can see that square wave there. You read the frequency it says 5.000 uh, kilohertz um, and that corresponds very closely to the big scope so it's quite accurate. This is uh, this this uh, single channel uh, device is uh, very cheap. It sells for about I don't know anything from thirty US dollars, and you can get it cheaper um, online. Very nice. It, can, it hasn't got many controls on it. No great finesses. Changing the amplitude on it, and you can change the time base as well, which is uh, this is time base. And Okay, and most of the readings are automatic. Handy if you've got nothing else. It's, um, it's it can be battery powered. I'm running it off a, an adapter. But the only bad thing is it's not got a um, its own battery compartment, so uh, that's a bit of a drawback. Anyway, back to the issue in hand, which what which is uh, how do we control this big motor? I've shown you the smaller motor with the uh, Arduino and the ESP32. What about the big one? Well, there's, there's two ways, of course, to control a position control, whether it's analog or digital. Uh, this, uh, this basic PID, which we can call parallel, if you like, we've got the error signal um, in any loop, whether it's position or whether it's uh, velocity, it doesn't really matter. You've got the position, the proportional term, integral term, and derivative term. And usually we've got a filter in here as well, because we don't want to... Um, if you, if you do this on its own, you do get some funny noises coming out of the, the motor, um, nasty sort of noises and sometimes rattling at high frequencies due to resonances because the derivative action um, is a kind of no-go area because it, uh, it's got a gain that keeps going up with frequency so you want to attenuate that. You could put a filter in here where the um, derivative action is or you could just put it outside all three. The other way is, oh that's the analog, that's an analog um, um, PID controller without a low pass filter I think. Oh it's got a low pass filter in there I see. Uh, the other way is you can do PI like that and you can put in series if you like or cascade you can put a phase advance stabilization. Um, the way I'm doing it is this is the old fashioned way, so this is the second way I'm going to do it. This is with, um, PI and then a phase lead, and this is so-called lag lead approach. Um, the PI is the like a lag compensator. It's not quite a lag compensator, but it's pretty close to a lag compensator. And, and the, to, to understand that, you've got to have a look at the board diagram really to see what's going on. But first of all, I'm just going to look at the um, PID one, and uh, I'll get the code up of that. Uh, one of the things I've been um, doing wrong. Or not, I mean, not wrong, but it's actually not the best way. Is is not using interrupts. So I've put interrupts on just about everything now. Uh, so I've got interrupts on the encoders. I've got uh, a timer interrupt for the sampling interval. Uh, you probably just saw that frequency that I was reading. It said 5.000. That there should be uh, five kilohertz. Um, it's a 10 kilohertz sampling rate. And so that should be reading five, half of that. This is the bit that does the timer interru interrupts, uh, port critical ISRs, internet uh, interrupt uh, service routine. Okay, that's the oh, that's the end of it. Sorry. 
Um, there's the beginning here. And that's the time apart at the top. And I've set it up so that it um, runs, as I say, uh, round the loop at uh, 10 kilohertz. <coughs> Now, the interesting thing is the Arduino can't really do this properly. It makes a good attempt at it, but if you want to do it properly, you're going to have to use proper micro-coding. Um, this is the um, next best thing, but it's, to be honest, it's pretty good. Uh, all, all that happens is when you get into the internet service routine, it sets a flag high, let's say, called interrupt counter. Uh, or, you can, or you can just say interrupt counter equals one, it doesn't really matter. So it sets that flag, so the hardware will do that. You don't have to, to run that routine. The hardware automatically uh, does that. And if you go down to the main while loop, which isn't really a while loop if it's Arduino code, uh, then uh, where is it? Let's see it somewhere. Oh, that's still set up. Oh, sorry. Sometimes difficult. This, yeah, there it is. Sometimes difficult in the Arduino system to find out where things begin and end uh, because you can't collapse the, um, the the loops and things in this editor. Uh, but then, if the interrupt count is greater than zero, then it does the while loop. This mean this infinite loop. Uh, but then it, de it decrements it, sets, resets it back again. Uh, and that's the best we can do, really, as far as I know because we can't use queues, this is another way to an improvement on this you need a real-time operating system and that's what my colleague told me so it's not going to be a, it's a great way to do it but that's a good way to do it uh, also we can do switches using interrupts uh, which I've done as well so everything's interrupt driven and this is the best as I say we can do is this flag that we set in the internet service routine so if we go back to a the demonstration here's my set point and that's the position control it's pretty good this is I'll just put it here so you can see me doing it you can see the red of it turning around I can go many times as round as I like the other thing I had to do was reduce the, um, not, uh, the make this uh, much smaller pulses per, uh, per, rev, per rev really because um, it can't take the, um, it can't follow the 1000 uh, pulses per rev, uh, so that's 360, yeah. There's a physical limit to how, how quickly it can follow these things. Uh, if I, um, I can, I have a switch here, which I can tell it where zero is, and then I can move the, move it round. If I flick the second switch, it should return to zero. There it goes. Do it again. Turn it around several times and eventually gets there. We're back to normal. So that's the, and if I feel it, it's not too bad. I can feel it a little bit, it's not, you know, solid by any means, uh, but it's uh, not too bad. So that's the um, PID. If I get rid of that, I've got the lag lead, I'll just um, upload that one. So the lag lead one should theoretically behave in a similar kind of manner. You can do some extra fancy things with it if you want, but, but here's the lag. I think it is slightly better to be honest. It's got strong, slightly feels stronger there. That's a, and, uh, maybe the bandwidth a little bit higher here. I can set the bandwidth, I know what I'm setting it at here. I've got the maths model of the motor properly, I can sort of draw a board plot really and figure it out. Um, and there we go, that's the lag lead. You can hear a little bit of noise there coming from it. Hear that? It's nothing serious there. I, you can reduce that by having a low pass filter that's, that's lower, uh, cutting off higher frequencies a bit lower down in the spectrum. Uh, if I got rid of the low pass filter it would be quite noisy um, maybe I, I could do that to show you and uh, it would have other effects um, so if you look at the code my basically everything's in cascade so 
I have uh, my PI bit, which is uh, it's like 1 plus ST over S. That's the code for that. It's very simple. And this would be similar code in any language, um, whatever you're doing. It's not going to change much. Phase lead, which I've designed digitally um, using Z transforms. And these are two low pass filters. So I could bypass them. I could take the output straight from the phase advance, which is um, Y, oh, there, sorry, you can't see it, Y0P, and shove that out to PWM, which would be here. Or as you can see it, Y0P, I'm going to change that. Y, oh, Y0P, and then recompile it. So that should get rid of my low pass filters. I should uh, be able to, should be quite interesting then. Compiling, loading. Oh, different. So you see the slight. You hear the noise this was. That's a grating noise. It would be worse with the PI though if I did the same. And if I increase the bandwidth, it'll get you know progressively worse that noise. So anyway, that's the basic idea. We've got the. Um, the large motor here running off the um, ESP32, um, just showing you the tiny oscilloscope just for interest sake. Um, and uh, they might be a very inexpensive setup uh, compared with the um, National Instrument stuff. Uh, it's sequential coding, it's not done in block diagram, of course, uh, but uh, still not the best way to do it because it's Arduino but very convenient nevertheless and for most people it's um, good enough to uh, to understand the subject at least uh, use interrupts if, where you can uh, and these always use interrupts as the lesson as well thank you very much